for Sci for Us. Ooh. Welcome to, to Saturday, Saturday STEM, STEM, where we bring science to you at home. We make science accessible and available for everyone. So, Jessica, what do we always start off with? 60 Second Experiments! So, today, what are we going to do? We are going to fill up sandwich bags. So, all you need is a sandwich bag, and we're going to fill it up with water. Okay. How much should we fill it up to? Um, I would say you just need it a quarter of the way full. Okay. And then, and what we're going to try and do is poke this pencil through without <laughs> any of the water gushing out. Okay. Yes. Yeah, slowly. Oh, oh. Oh, gosh. Oh. oh, yes. Done it. Back it through. Yes. Ooh. Amazing. Should I get some more Thank you. Let's try it with another pencil. Okay. Ooh. Do you know what? Yeah. This is so amazing. How we haven't had so much water leaking out already. Literally. I've got three. I'm going to push it with you. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Yes. Okay. So why does this happen? Um, well, this is because actually the plastic bag mm. is made up of loads of polymer chains. Okay. So polymer chains are chains of molecules, and what the pencil does is it inserts through the polymer chains and it just widens the gaps between the chains. Okay. So right now it's not broken, which okay. is wide. But if we were to pull it out, oh my gosh! If we were to pull it out, we virtually will probably break the gap. But um, let's see if that's um, true. So you break the chain. We'll break the chain. Let's see. Let's see. Ah! Yes. yes. <laughs> Broken. Okay. I'm not even gonna try. Woo! You can try this at home. All you need is a sandwich bag, water, and pencils. Today's experiments will all be centered around water. So we're just going to tell you a few science facts about water. Now, water has the chemical formula H2O, which means it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Okay. Now, water as a molecule is the second most abundant molecule we find here on Earth. The most abundant molecule is hydrogen gas, H2. Wow. Water can be found in three states. So water as a solid is usually known as ice. Then water as a liquid is just water, and then water as a gas is known as steam or water vapour. Water, fact number four, covers 70% of the earth. Now the largest oceans that we find here on earth are the Atlantic, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. Number five, water is a very good solvent. So what this means is that it's very good and loads of things can actually dissolve into it. So things like salt and sugars, they can dissolve into it really easily. But as you saw from our last week's episode or session, you should have seen that oils don't really dissolve well in water. Mm -hmm. And water also has strong hydrogen bonds, okay. so it means you have to have a lot of energy. To have a lot of energy to be able to break these bonds. But all these facts just show how much we need water. Yeah. Humans, as humans, we need water to keep hydrated, and we use water in all aspects of our life. We use it for cooking. Mm -hmm. You can use it for hydropower, so to generate electricity. Wow. Um, we use it in all aspects. Aspects, plants need it without water we wouldn't be able yeah. to exist so yeah. we're just going to show you the different experiments that you can do with water experiment number one we're going to do chromatography mm -hmm. color chromatography using water coffee filter and pens and some pencils mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we do first? So the first thing first is you take your coffee filter paper mm -hmm. and you're going to draw lines so that you're cutting out rectangles. Okay, rectangles, thank you. And you don't want to like, you don't want it to be really thick. Okay. So. Your strips, you can see what size they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, then next step is if we take our felt tip 
pens. Mm -hmm. So what colour would you like? Orange please. There you go. And I'll just take this pink one. At the top, at the bottom. And um, you want it to be slightly... So when it goes into the water, you don't want it to be able to touch the water. So you want it to be roughly about like there. So a quarter okay. way through. quarter of the way up. Yeah. Can I also try blue? Okay. A quarter of the way up. Okay, so it's like into your beaker. Okay. But you just want it to be like an eighth. So that's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. And then now you're going to want your pencil that you do your rectangles with. And we're going to want to use that as like our prop mm -hmm. so that we're able to hold our um, coffee filter paper up. So maybe that's fine. Or if you want to use some tape, okay. which is by your. Thank you. we're going to do is we're going to put our paper inside but make sure that it doesn't touch you immediately so now it should start rising yeah. the water rising up the coffee paper and then rising up the coffee oh yeah, yeah, yeah. wow it happened the quickest in the pink why is this happening so this is because the ink, it rises up the paper because of the water. So it causes the ink to rise up and different colour ink has, it rises up to a different like level on um, the paper. And this is because they each have their own different values and this is called the RF value. Um, so this is why things like colour chromatography is used for like analytical purposes okay. so we're able to see what additives are added to foods okay. and what colours are in particular foods as well okay so this could help us separate when we have foods to mm -hmm. know what colours and what additives are in the exactly. food we can use this paper and we can put this there and the colours will stop at different levels exactly. so here we can see that the pink raised all the way to the yeah. top the blue was kind of in the middle and um the orange didn't rise as high as the others yeah. cool So this experiment is all going to be focused on the water cycle. So the water cycle is the process in which water moves across the surface of this earth. So um, water moves across the surface of this earth by using the physical processes called evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and then you have runoff. So the water cycle, we're able to see water in its three different forms. So we're able to see water as a liquid, yeah. we're able to see water as a gas, yeah. and we're also able to see water as a solid. So like Amara said, there are four processes. So the first process is evaporation. And this is when water from the oceans or the rivers, they rise up into the atmosphere. So it turns from a liquid to a gas. Then when it's in the atmosphere, this gas starts to cool down. And this process, the cooling down process, is what is actually condensation. So condensation is when we have a water vapour which then turns into back into a liquid. So when it's in the atmosphere and it's cooled down, this starts to form heavy water vapour. The water vapour starts to form clouds. And when these clouds get really heavy, then the water droplets start to drop basically from the clouds and they can either go into rain or into the sleet and this process is what is called precipitation yeah then when we have precipitation the fourth process is called runoff so this is how water is spread across the land so we've had it rain we've either had snow and then this is how it spreads across the land and goes back into our oceans and our rivers and then you'll get the process again so you'll get evaporation you'll then get condensation precipitation and that is the water cycle yeah. runoff and that is the water cycle so you have the four different stages so now we're going to now we've explained the water cycle to you we're going to do an activity that uses sandwich bags to help us visualize and explain the different parts of the water cycle so for this experiment all you'll need is a sandwich bag a marker and water okay so the first thing that 
we want you to do is to draw a squiggly line at the bottom of your sandwich bag. Now this represents the sea or the ocean. Or the ocean. Okay. Behind that, we just want you to draw a little mound and this represents the land. And on top of your land, if you draw a tree. Okay. So the first process that we previously spoke about was evaporation. So what we want you to draw on your sandwich bags are lines showing how the water as a liquid is changing into a gas as water vapor, so lines. So as it rises. Yeah. And what's helping this rise would be the sun. Mm -hmm. So on your sandwich bags, we want you to draw a sun in the corner. We need heat for evaporation to take place. And that's so by your arrows, your wiggly lines, arrows, if you just write evaporation, evaporation. Okay. So after evaporation, we spoke about condensation. So on your pictures near the top, we want you to draw a cloud. And this is shown when your, when your water yeah. as a gas, so your water vapor is going from a the, gas to back into liquid. a liquid. So we write condensation. And this is how our clouds are formed when the water droplets come together. So we know that when our clouds get heavy, mm -hmm. this causes droplets. droplets and we get precipitation. Yeah. And we could get this in the form of rain, so yeah. as a liquid, or we can have snow it's and nice. sleet. So that is water yeah. as a solid. So on your pictures, we want you to draw some drops coming down out of your clouds. So you could draw circles if you want it to represent snow. <laughs> and then near that, we just want you to write the words precipitation. Precipitation. So we want you to draw the rain coming down and then write the words precipitation. So then once we've had precipitation, mm -hmm. the last bit we said was runoff. Yeah. So we want you to draw an arrow going from the land. So it's fallen from the sky back into the sea. And this is run off. Okay, so you have your different processes on your sandwich bags. You have evaporation, you have condensation, you have precipitation, and you have runoff. Okay, so once you have this, take your sandwich bags, open your sandwich bags, and then we want you to pour water into your sandwich bags. Only up until your ocean line. So the water should come up to your ocean line. So then you can see you have water at the bottom, Experiment number three. The experiment is now we've learned about the water cycle and the different forms in which we can find watering. Mm -hmm. We just want to be able to visualize this um, a bit better. So we're going to be able to see condensation. We should be able to see the process of evaporation happen. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to do this using cups to visualize the first two stages. Yeah. Evaporation and condensation. Okay, so all you need for this experiment is cups. You need water in its solid form, so you need ice, mm -hmm. and the water needs to be boiled because we need to have steam, so we need to have warm water. So if you could just get an adult supervision to give you some warm water. So first of all, you need two cups for this. You need to fill one cup with your hot water. You should be able to see the steam. Then, what we want you to do is put the other cup on top of this. And you should be able to see the steam. You should be able to start seeing your water as a gas. But what we're going to do to try and represent the condensation, so we know that condensation happens um, when cooling takes place. Um, 
we're going to put ice cubes at the top. So this should make it cooler at the top. Okay. Evaporation take place because we've seen the steam. And then when this steam starts to cool down, we get condensation happening. So we're getting the gas turning back into a liquid. So this process is both evaporation and condensation. And I can see already there is water droplets on my cup. Oh yeah. Okay, so what we did is we put the hot water into the cup. You should have started to see your steam in the cup and we put another cup on top of this. So what we're showing is the process of evaporation. So we're showing that as the water is heated, we can get as a gas, as steam. And then the steam rises and because we put ice on the top to make it cool as the steam rises and we've added the cooling setting you start to have condensation experiment number four this is all we're doing with the water cycle but yeah. The last experiment focused on evaporation and condensation. This one is focusing on precipitation. So in one cup, we're going to try and recreate rain mm -hmm. and how clouds form. And then when they get heavy, we get rain dropping, so precipitation. And in the other, we're going to try and do this and create a snowstorm. Okay. So we're seeing, we're representing water yeah. in its solid phase. So in your rain cup, what you need is for this you need water you need shaving foam you also need food coloring blue mm. food coloring yeah. and um, once again you can either use a pet or a spoon okay so if you get your cups first thing first just fill them up nearly to the top with water Now, using a pipette, or if you don't have a pipette, you can use a spoon. What we're going to do is with, sorry, I didn't mention food colouring. You need food colouring, blue preferably. And we're going to get our blue food colouring and we're going to hold. And what you see at first is what you should see is that it sits in the cloud. And this is what happens. You get the water gathering in, mm -hmm. in our clouds. And it's not until really it's heavy. really heavy yeah. when you'll start to get rain. Yeah. So if you add, you'll it's start to see. Oh, there it's we go. In. My clouds. see from our cup that we created rain oh. so precipitation in a liquid form in our cups so the second part of this we'll put it to the side and create a snowstorm mm -hmm. so precipitation but water in its solid form so we're going to try and represent a snowstorm so for this so for this one we'll need some baby oil we need PVA glue and we will need some alka -Seltzer. So, first things first is to pour at least three quarters of your jug should be full of baby oil. Well, that's pretty big, so we might do it halfway through. Halfway, just enough so you don't see. So, we're now going to take a second cup and here we're going to create our PVA glue and water mixture. So you'll just need to add a few squirts of PVA into your cup. That's it, that's it. And then, Thank you. then we'll add some water. So again, swirl it, just keep swirling. And then what we're gonna do is we'll add this. We're gonna just start off maybe bit by bit so that we can see what is happening. So break it up and then just drop it in and we'll see. And you should see. 
you so, just start to see like a snowstorm in your cups. Yep. So then you can keep adding some more alka seltzer. So that's all the experiments that we have today. We hope you enjoyed the four experiments mm -hmm. that we did oh, with water. water. Make sure that you send us any e pictures, email yeah. us any of the experiments that you did. We love to see it. And we will hope to see you tune in next week for more Saturday STEM. Once again, we want to thank you so much for sending in your videos from the Colour Science last week. We love to see it, so thank you.